Hi, welcome to this video on Modbus TCP IP. In this video, we'll be discussing about Modbus TCP IP communication, data frames, simulations in Modbus TCP IP, and finally, you'll be able to diagnose or troubleshoot TCP IP communications in Modbus. If you are interested in similar topics, do consider subscribing to the channel. Without further ado, I'm starting the video. So, what is Modbus? Modbus is a communication protocol which was developed by Modicon in 1979 for its use in programmable logic controllers or PLCs. Modbus is an open protocol and since then Modbus has become the de facto communication protocol standard and it's still used in the industry. Prior to 1979, every vendor was having their own proprietary communication protocol. As a result, each vendor was forming their own monopoly in communication devices. When Modbus came into existence, third-party vendors were able to integrate their uh, equipment with uh, Modicon PLCs. As a result, the customers preferred Modbus communication devices and as a result was further adopted by other vendors. Now let us begin with what is Modbus network layering. It is necessary to know about the open system interconnection model. The Open System Interconnection Model or the OSI model is a model used for the computer network communication. So as per the OSI model, there are seven layers beginning with the application layer. In the application layer, you have the protocols which is like uh, HTTP, FTP, SNTP, etc. So the packets from the application layer are sent to the presentation layer. In the presentation layer, you have uh, services like encryption, decryption etc. So the data regarding the encryption and decryption are added onto the data packets from the application layer. From the application layer and presentation layer, the data then goes to the session layer. In the session layer, you have the information regarding the authentication and authorization. So the data regarding the authentication and authorization are added onto the data from the presentation layer. From the session layer, your packets will be going to the transport layer. In the transport layer, details regarding the communications like TCP uh, or UDP are added onto the data packets from the session layer. From the transport layer, then the data goes to the network layer. In the network layer, the details regarding the IP and the port details are appended onto the data from the transport layer. From the network layer, it goes to the data link layer where the information regarding the physical address of the device is added onto the packets from the network layer and from there it goes to the physical layer which is the physical communication channel between the devices so the flow of data packets can happen from the application layer to the physical layer in case of a server and can happen from the physical layer to the application layer in the case of a client okay now we will uh, briefly discuss about various uh, osi layers the application layer as i mentioned before such as HTTP, SNTP, FTP, Modbus, etc. And the data is then sent to the presentation layer, which is used for data conversion, encryption, compression, etc. From where it goes to the session layer. In the session layer, it is used for services such as authorization and authentication. And from there, the data packets are going to the transport layer. And the details regarding TCP, UDP, etc. are appended onto the data packets from the session layer in the transport layer. From the transport layer, your data packets are sent to the network layer where it is used for host addressing and message forwarding. The Modbus TCP IP uses the Modbus version 4 and the port 502. Okay, from the network layer, your data packets are sent to the data link layer. In the data link layer, the details of the physical address of the devices are added onto the data packets and from there it goes to the physical layer. So in the physical layer, you have the CAT5, CAT6 cables. So or uh, communication through serial or RJ45 LAN cables, etc. So these are the seven layers in the OSI model. Now coming to the Modbus network layering, you have five layers. So first you have the Modbus application layer, then you have the transport layer, the network layer, data link layer, and finally the physical layer, which is Ethernet. So there is no presentation layer or uh, session layer here because Modbus does not support data encryption decryption and authentication and authorization services so this is your modbus client and this is the modbus server 
so the data flow can happen in both directions for the server and the client so next we will be discussing about the modbus memory addressing so there are four data types or memory types available in modbus coils inputs input registers and holding registers so the coil and inputs are one bit memory input registers and holding registers are 16 bit memory and uh, the address for uh, coils begin from 1 to 10000 the inputs begin from uh, 10001 to 20000 input registers begin from uh, 30001 to 40000 and the holding registers begin from 40001 to 50000 the coils are used for discrete output inputs are used for discrete inputs input registers are used for analog inputs and the holding registers are used for analog outputs now to the modbus function codes modbus function codes are uh, like commands used in the modbus communication so there are six modbus function codes available so the first four are for uh, reading commands and the five and six are for writing commands okay the one is for a read coil status function code 2 is for a read input status function code 3 is to read holding register function code 4 is to read input register and 5 is for forcing a single coil 6 is to preset single register so these are the six function codes available in modbus and next we will discuss about the modbus data frame so the modbus tcp data frame is as shown here so you have a transaction identifier which is 2 bytes the protocol identifier which is also 2 byte the length is also 2 byte the unit id is uh, 1 byte function code is 1 byte and the 8 bit data type here comes under 4 bytes so this portion that is the transaction identifier the protocol identifier length and the unit id is called the modbus application protocol header and the remaining portion is called the protocol data unit the entire data frame is called the application protocol data unit or the APDU. Now we will uh, begin by explaining what the transaction identifier is. The transaction identifier or the transaction ID is used to distinguish between different queries sent from the client to the server. So let's take an example of a client sending queries to the server. So first you have the query 1 with the transaction ID one sent to the server and in the next instant you are sending another query to your server and in case of modbus it is not necessary that the server should reply to the query one first it can reply to the query two and subsequently the query one so in this case it is necessary to distinguish between different queries and responses and the transaction id is used for this purpose okay next we will discuss about the protocol identifier the protocol identifier is reserved for uh, future applications then the length the length of the remaining frame is provided here the unit id is the modbus id so each modbus device will have a unit id and then we have the function code this is the modbus command as discussed before we have six function codes available and this is the actual data now we will see how communication happens between the server and client in modbus tcp through ethernet so this is the ethernet or the physical layer and here is the server software module modbus software module which is also the application layer in the application layer you have the modbus data frame which is the application protocol data unit the application protocol data unit is sent to the transport layer where the details regarding the TCP header is added and it is sent to the network layer where the details regarding the IP and port details are added on and from there it is sent to the data link layer and in the data link layer you have the header related to the MAC address okay this then goes to the Ethernet and is going back to the client and from the client the data link layer will accept the packet and from here it is stripped of the MAC portion or the MAC header and it is sent to the network layer. In the network layer, it identifies the IP details and it strips the IP header in the network layer and sends the data to the transport layer. In the transport layer, it receives the TCP details and it strips the packet of the 
TCP header and sends the application protocol data unit back to the application layer. Okay, this is how the more bus TCP communication happens between the server and the client. So the final final data packet you see in the network will be of this form, which has the MAC address, the IP address, the TCP, and the APDU or the application protocol data unit. This is how communication happens in Modbus TCP IP. In the next video, we will see the query and response cycles for a Modbus TCP IP communication. So I will see you in the next video.